We're going to talk a little today about walking out in cornfields at this time of the year and some of the things you might notice. Now, back quite a few years ago, one of the things we picked up from Neil Kinsey, he's one of the world's leading soil fertility experts. As we were walking out in a field, he was talking to us about manganese just a little bit and the shortage of manganese that we likely had on our farm. And sure enough, as we looked at our soil tests, we did. But anyway, one of the things he talked about was different ear heights. So as you walk along in your cornfield, you want those ears to be all at the same level. Well, what Neil said is, he goes, look, hey, it looks to me like you got a decent planter. A lot of the other things are in good shape here, but I'm wondering, do you have inadequate adequate levels of manganese because manganese has a big impact on emergence overall and what I'm seeing is uneven ear heights. So that tells me you likely had uneven emergence. You know, this spring we did see some of this uneven emergence as well on dry land farms across much of the upper Midwest because of dry soil conditions. Many farmers that we talk to each day on the Ag PhD radio program have said, you know, I had the best planting conditions I've had all year or for many years, and it was the top couple of inches that were really dry and easy to work with. And down deeper, eh, it may not have been so pretty. It may have been kind of mucky yet from the last couple of years of being too wet. And so what we saw was some of the planting and some of the tillage that got done is we had uneven moisture conditions where each seed was. And it's so important to pay attention to that because what happened this spring was, well, if you didn't get it rain for a couple of weeks, you may have some corn emerging where it had some moisture and you may have had corn planted at the exact same depth, six inches away, that was just sitting there waiting for moisture and not emerging. So when you get that unevenness out in a field, it doesn't look very good and it also doesn't yield as well. And so the whole point here is we just want you to take a look at your stand overall, look at your ear height overall and try to figure out what's going wrong on your farm. And maybe you can figure something out now, maybe you can't. But the point is, if you're out there looking, at least you have an idea if things are perfect, if things are pretty good, if things look really spotty. So one of the other things that we saw quite a bit of this year is just skips, doubles, as we're walking through a lot of different fields all around the country. Uh, we also found where farmers didn't necessarily follow their strip till machine perfectly. Even on our own farm, it gets to be a challenge when you're farming in the contour and around terraces, there's always that drag. When you start talking about your machine behind you and how far is that going to shift how far is that going to flow one way or the other as you're going around that hill? If you can't follow your strip very well, well now all of a sudden you might have uneven emergence due to that. The big thing is just get out in your fields and start evaluating these things if you haven't been doing that already earlier in the season. Well, Brian kind of mentioned uh, manganese deficiency and an early season impact it may have, but this time of year, as that corn gets a little bit bigger and it's really rapidly growing and starting to fill ears, you're going to see some nutrient deficiencies showing up on those leaves as well. So when you're looking at the plants, if you're looking at the lower leaves on the plant, oftentimes you may see an NP or K deficiency there because those nutrients are mobile within the plant. So that means as that plant starts producing an ear, if it can't draw enough NP or K in through the root system, it steals it from those older lower leaves on the plants. Now at the top of the plant, we did see a lot of plants this year that showed some striping or some yellowing on upper leaves. You can do plant tissue analysis along the way. You can also do soil analysis really at any time of the year to try to identify what are some of those things that might be short. Well, if it happens at the top of the plant, it's an immobile nutrient. So one that once it's into the plant, it stays put. And that may be sulfur, it may be some of the micronutrients. That can be a real challenge as well. So if you're thinking, well, I just need to get NP and K right, don't think that way. You've got to get all the essential nutrients for your plants, and you can certainly see that as you walk through fields at this time. Late in the season, it's not a lot of fun walking through cornfields, so I can understand how you don't want to do it. But it's really helpful, especially let's say that you have satellite maps. Let's say that you have some type of imagery that you can take a look at. Maybe that's going to help you identify where are the worst spots in the field. Because usually what happens for Darren and me is we get these calls in the fall and a guy will say, man, I got this area in the field that's yielding really poorly. What do you think happened? 
<laughs> well, at that point, we don't know. But right now, you can get this imagery. You can see, hey, there is what looks like a problem in a certain area of the field. Go to that area. Let's figure out what it is. Is it a drainage issue? Is it a poor stand? Is it weeds? Is it maybe nutrient deficiency like Darren was just talking about? Or could it be diseases or insects? Right now, we are seeing a lot of diseases and a lot of insects in corn. What do you have specifically for diseases? What do you have specifically for insects? And are these things that maybe should have been controlled a week or two or three weeks earlier, or maybe they're just starting now and you could still get them under control yet this year? I think the yield monitor is one of the greatest inventions that we've had for farming because now we can see exactly how things turned out across our farm and we can look at different areas of the field and see, wow, I had more yield here or less yield there and make some adjustments accordingly. But if you don't get out there and do this in season scouting all through the year, you really can't let that yield map tell you the whole picture. Because maybe as Brian mentioned, there was a bug or there was a disease or there was a nutrient deficiency or there was even something with your fertilizer application or your tillage or, or even your planter. If you can't identify what those things are that cost you yield this year, you don't have the opportunity to fix them for next year. So it is really important you get out in your fields. Well, speaking of identification, can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 